Happy Thanksgiving 2018, part two of two. Well, it's Thanksgiving, and we're having a party at family's house. And since I'm vegan, they want me to cook some squash. Welcome to Healthy Vegan Living. And that's going to be the next step. All right, so let's get started on that. Thank you. And now we're going to start cutting. Okay, now we're going to cut this one. Take the sticker off. You know, you guys, I always have this thing about stickers. Now, instead of using this knife here, we're going to use my longer $2 knife. You probably have already seen my video by now. Okay, and I'm going to use my mallet, the kitchen mallet. And this is the this is a $2 knife. So if you were to nip like over here on the edge, it's not going to really damage the knife that badly compared to some of my other knives that I've used in the past. So you just want to cut it like this. And this knife is sharp enough that it easily goes down there. Okay, so we're gonna grab the seeds out of this green one, pull that out, and the same thing for the other side. These seeds are much smaller than pumpkin seeds. Of course, this is smaller than the pumpkin. That would make sense. All right, we're gonna scrape those out in a minute. The next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do this, um, here's another sticker. We're gonna use this butternut squash. And you see, this is how I do this. If I put my knife next to it, it's not gonna go all the way through. So that's why I used this other knife, which is much larger. So I'm just gonna aim it like this. Use the mallet side, this side here, another one with the teeth. So this one is going to be butternut squash. We're going to use a different plate for that one. And the seeds are much smaller, as you can see. I mean, you can feed the entire army with all, if you could germinate all these seeds. And we'll get the other side. I like to use a huge tablespoon like this one here. And I'm going to show you this one. And if you've seen my other videos, nothing's changed. This is exactly what I do on all my videos. Anyone that I've done the squash, if you're doing it, I guess it's just this stuff doesn't taste good. I'm gonna cook this the traditional way that I normally cook squashes. I'm just gonna add a little twist to it at the end. Okay, so that one's ready to go. We're gonna lay it here temporarily. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this one here. This membrane, that's what this stuff is called. Now I eat squash all year long and I didn't think about even saving the seeds. What I normally do is I put them in the oven and I eat the seeds. Now I can cook these exactly the way they are, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take my other 99 cent uh, $2 knife and I'm gonna cut it in half. And this is solid right over here. Well, this is concave. Sometimes what you can do this, and I'm not doing it this time around because it's, it's Thanksgiving, is you can stuff this in with rice and so forth. I'm just serving the squash tonight. Okay, so next we do is, now we're doing the acorn squash, and we're gonna do the same thing as we did with the butternut. We're gonna grab this membrane out of here. A little harder to grab. Now I know what the menu is gonna be for Thanksgiving, so that's why I'm not stuffing it. There's already gonna be some rice, and other people are gonna be bringing all kinds of different dishes, some vegan and some not. So there's no need for embellishing mine. I'm just bring, basically bringing the vegetables. All right, so you see all the pieces are cut. They even go a little bit over there. Okay, now let me explain. All right, you want to use some olive oil. I like olive oil, safflower oil. You want to use some kind of oil. I don't really like canola oil, but I like the taste of olive oil, which is why I use it. And this is member's mark. It's a giant container. Let's see, 68 fluid ounces. That's 2.11 quarts or 2 liters. And it says on here, rich flavor. And it says here, ingredients, extra organic, extra virgin olive oil. Nothing else. That's what you want. You want to find something that, if this is oil, shouldn't have anything else but oil. Next thing you do, you pour some of the oil into a container like this. 
and you get yourself a brush. This is a brush that I use for this type of job and I only save it for this job. In about this many, I'll probably throw it in a dishwasher, it'll get cleaned up and I use it again. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna just show you a couple pieces and I'll be quiet and we'll speed through this. So you can see it on this piece, I'm just gonna quickly do this. And that's basically what I'm doing. I'm coating with oil, olive oil, the vegetables. In this case, the squash. This is the bun. This is the, that's right, the butternut squash. Here's the acorn squash. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna coat it over here, okay? And then the next thing I do is I had a, a salad seasoning, and this one has got, let's see, it's got salt, sugar, herbs, spices, dehydrated vegetables, garlic, parsley, onion, citric acid, paprika. It just tastes good on it. But if you don't like using this, you can just use something like um, Italian seasoning. And I do use that. But I've been using this lately. I got it from my mom. So she said it was a nice nice flavor. And I've been enjoying using it. Now, you want to make sure it's on the little big holes. But I want to show you. After you oil it, you put this all over it. Or a seasoning of your choice. And that's it. Then from here, it goes on your grill. Now it's not where exactly where that's going to go, but it's close enough for now. And I'm going to just do this job and we're going to fast forward this so that you don't have to watch me oil vegetables for 15 minutes.
Now, you have to think of this as an oven. All right, this is the top rack of your oven. The middle is the center rack of your oven. And the third part is the bottom rack of your oven of a regular oven. The next step you do after you do this is you put the cover on. And you try to make sure the vegetables doesn't fight you to put it on. So you're going to have to maneuver things around. Like so. And you see how this bottom here is touching? That shouldn't touch at all. But it's okay, it's gonna fit. The next thing you do is you adjust your timer. You see that you're at zero. If you press level one, this is power high. That's 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what I normally cook uh, squash at anyway. And I normally cook it for an hour. But I've learned with practice now that I press, I'll show you, I press cook timer and I put in 45 and it says right there, you see how it says minutes? And that's what it's going to be. Then the next thing I do, I press the start button right over here. And you hear, you can hear the, the fan turning, the eat elements turning on now. And all we have to leave it alone now. I'll be checking it periodically to make sure we don't burn anything. All right, so we'll see in a little bit. This is a good time to clean up the kitchen. So I'm putting my knives away so they don't get mixed up with the other stuff. This will go in the dishwasher because it wasn't just oil this time, it was a combination of oil and herbs. And these herbs is not usually what I use. This is just something my mother really liked and she wanted to share with me. All right, so this all goes into the sink. If the oil hadn't been contaminated, I'd use it up in some other way. But it touched the vegetables, and that's not going to work. So now what I'm doing is I'm spraying down the cutting board, cleaning that so that we have a, a, a good surface to work on later. And I'm going to use soap. Because anytime you use fresh vegetable, you should, should, you should use soap, especially if you use meat. I don't use meat, but if you're going to be using meat and you're cooking uh, on one board only, I have several boards. I have a meat board for my wife, and I have many several uh, other boards that I use. I have a bamboo board, for example. Okay, so we're just going to put that like this for a minute. Let this drain. I'm going to show you real quickly how I clean my knives. I have to get a, a... So here I just got myself a towel and I'm going to be wiping down my board and I'll put it away until I need it because i got to clean the countertop. When you cut up this many squashes, you have seeds going everywhere. Just something you have to deal with. TJ picks up these seeds and it's goes running around the carpeting. The knives are simple. It's got some soapy water. You just do this to your knives. You might want to get the hilt if you add some oil on there. You don't want to run your finger along the edge because then you'll cut it. You'll cut your fingers. The same thing, whether it's a $2 knife or a $50 knife, it's going to be sharp, especially you've seen me cut all kinds of foods with it. All right, so I never put my, my knives in a dishwasher. After I wash them with soap, I do this. I, and then I clean the, the, the hilt, the plastic part here where I hold on to and I have a block for this and I put it in the block right away. Now when I do this I don't damage my knives, my knives don't get mishandled. Okay, so that's done. And this one is just a plastic guard but it's got a built-in cutter into it, not that I use that. But you know in case I ever wanted to sharpen my knife you can see it right over here. So what I do is I just lay it on the top so it doesn't sharpen it and I pull it out I do the same thing. So you can see it's going on its way and right now if you take a look at the timer it's been 39 minutes so that's how much it's been cooking so that's what's left of the timer okay so we're going to let you go at this and when it's nearly done do that how do you stop it there's a pause button right over here you press it stops the fan instantly that doesn't mean it's not hot when you have this cord here i'm showing you the cord here my hands you have to make sure when you pick up this thing that you don't lay it on the cord. So I'm picking it up. 
and it's hot because it's an, it's an oven. You take this up this fork here and you just poke it in. They're not ready yet, which is what I expected, especially this piece is a giant piece. So I try on the bottom. So they got a ways to go, which is good. Okay, so then you pick this up again, you put it back on top, make sure it's sealed correctly. Then to start again, you go back to the start button right over here, you press start. Okay, so it's the fan start again, and it's gonna go through its cycle again. Probably 24 minutes. Okay, there's only two minutes left, and I can already tell by the conditions of the squash that at least the top layer is done. So I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna pause it here. Carefully move the top up. Should wear probably wear mittens when you do this. I can do this because I have such a large counter space, but if you didn't have that, you'd be doing this. That's what this was designed to do. Then you take your fork and you just go, and you see how it goes right through? Now these are dried, it looks like. But these are ready, these are cooked. So we're gonna pull them out and check the other layers. So what I did is I pulled out my giant bowl. I'm sure you've seen me. This is from Crate and Barrels, in case you're ever wondering. And take them off. Ooh, that one's so well cooked, it just fell apart on me. This is another one of those other ones. And I put down the bowl. And at this point, I have to get this screen off. So you have to use mitts. So what I'm gonna do is, see how it's fallen upon on itself? So you grab this out and you put this in your sink and all of these are cooked. And then I'm going to pick them up from the bottom. I think I'm gonna use a spatula. Now you don't wanna use a plastic spatula because this is hot. You wanna use a metal one so it doesn't damage the grate, but it also doesn't melt in your food. So these, what I'm going to do is I'm very carefully going to remove them out of here. And I'm going to pack, oh, that was cute. And I'm going to prepare them for, for package so I can bring them to the party tonight. Thanksgiving is a festival for us. It's a beautiful time when we catch up. Okay, so I'm just going to put everything on top of each other. It's going to cool down a little bit so I can get to the next layer. You're gonna do the mitt again. And I'm doing this as like you were, you didn't have a huge countertop like I have. You put it away in a sink or away from this area. And then if you wanted to, you can test it. And the ones on the bottom are not as cooked. Oh no, they're perfect. They go right through. This bowl is full. Okay, so it just basically dropped the liquids I was hoping to keep. All right, so now you know, this is what I'm gonna be taking for my Thanksgiving and this over here is going to be joining me so I have like three or four of these I've got my name on it so what I do is I'm going to carry them in this so right now I can use the fork and I can transfer some of them over right now they're really hot and when we get to the party we'll be able to cut them into smaller pieces yeah well I don't get burnt doing it okay so that one's not too bad. The party's in an hour, so I have just barely enough time to get this over there. Linda, are you ready? Yep. Okay, so she's getting herself ready, and I have to change. All I'm wearing is a t-shirt, some short. I definitely don't want to wear that. My mother calls them glad rags. You're so happy to have them over there, you want to look nice. I'm gonna take the rest of this in another container. But now you see, I would store it this way if I wasn't going to a party. This would be the way I would stick it in my refrigerator and it would be just fine.
One final note. When I put it all together again, now it's all clean. I put the band back on, I put the plate on, I put the smaller tray on the bottom and the larger tray on the top. And then I put this back on, it's still hot. And I leave it out a little bit, like this. And this gives it a chance for it to cool down safely. And then when you're doing this, unplug it. And you can tell it's unplugged because it says zero here. You can see, see there's nothing over here. That's how you know it's unplugged. And if you do the cleanup right away, then the next day, tomorrow, whenever, it's all ready for you. But if you do wait until tomorrow, you, you're gonna end up at staining it. it. Eventually, it's just gonna, it's not gonna be in the pristine shape that it was. Now, if you do have to clean this surface here, all you have to do is separate this by twisting. And then you can clean this bowl. And I will get this later because it's too hot right now. And of course, I have to go to the party. All right, so it's a fairly simple pr process. I think the new Wave Pro infrared oven is an excellent deal. It does so far everything I've expected of it as of an oven. It cooks very well. Thanks very much for watching and happy Thanksgiving. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.